Jeff, how did the guys look today? Another good day. Full pads and a lot of popping, excitement. Get two or got to, right? And uh, kids really have a mindset they get to. And uh, there's still something to be said for teams that care about each other and tough people and hanging in there and doing the right thing. And uh, we've got a locker room full of those kind of guys. What's uh, your health status at this point? Did that week off help yeah. bring some guys back? Yeah. Uh, I'd say we're in really good shape. Of course, whenever you go full pads, you know, you, yeah. you get some nicked up again. So we'll see what, you know, every day Nick comes in, gives us our report, and just, you never know really the Nick tells us. We've been talking a lot about the offensive line shuffle. Do you see where those guys kind of benefited from a week off? Is there a difference there at this point? Uh, yeah, those guys, uh, they probably needed that week off more than anybody. So they've been really good. We had one of our best days today, and I think it's because they're healthy. What did you see from that group in the conference championship game? They had rotated eight up there, but it seemed like they held up pretty well. Yeah, just, you know, a little like a group that we've been rotating all year and just surviving. And that's a bad way to say it, but, I mean, we had to just get through the game. And uh, we had guys, you know, just, just did what they could for the team, and, and they got through. And we had guys partnered up with players to help get them through the game. And uh, it was, you know, Makai and Maka and Spencer. Uh, and McCoy didn't even make the whole game through. So I think we had spent the game through the other three we had to rotate. So you're right, probably eight of them had to get through that game. We, we saw Sincere pull down an All-America honor yesterday, and he's picked up a bunch of stuff in the last couple of weeks. Just what's been your reaction to seeing the amount of awards he's been able to pull in? Couldn't happen to a better kid. You know, homegrown uh, from our city. And, uh, he's very Converse proud. I mean, he's, he's Judson Rocket proud now. and Couldn't happen to a better kid. And uh, it makes Maka proud, and Makai, all those guys. You know, it's, it's our second phase of our triangle of toughness. Uh, since the day I got hired, we're committed to running the football. Now, y'all know I'm impatient as heck, too, and we're going to throw it down the field probably every sixth play, uh, which keeps our receivers happy. But none of that stuff happens without the commitment to running the football. That's quarterback fakes and tight ends, everybody. We all take great pride in that. And uh, we're very happy for him. He's a great representative of our university and our city and got a beautiful smile. Uh, a lot of good potential name, image, and likeness deals out there for Sincere. Do you sense that those accolades are meaningful to him, or how does he react when those things come his way? He's a team guy. He always is, always has been, always will be. That's who he is. And You know, you've heard me say all my corny sayings a million times, but when you win, there's enough for everybody. And when you lose, there's never enough. And winning, you know, it's the chicken and the egg. Uh, but when you win, always have players that make honors. And when you lose, for some reason, you don't ever have players that make honors. So, chicken or egg. Do you ever look like you guys are headed on a field trip to yeah. this afternoon? Where are you guys headed to? Fired up, man. Headed to the zoo. Uh, man, I've never seen some kids so excited. And really appreciative, Tim, for setting that up for us. And man, he's going to give our kids a, a first class deal today. And uh, just another example of a booster, an alum, uh, trying to give back. And uh, our kids are very grateful. and. I can't tell you how excited, I mean, they're down there arguing over they want to see the snakes or the alligators or the lions. It's it's literally like a bunch of kids going to recess right now or field day. And uh, I feel like I'm back at Big Sandy fixing to drive the bus on the old field day trip to the Tyler Zoo, but we're going to a, a, a bigger and better zoo. And I'm, I'm excited, actually. I'm a country boy, right? I like, I like the animals. Is it good to have something like that to kind of break up the week a little bit? Yeah. I mean, these are supposed to be rewarding. That's why bowls were made, right? And... Uh, it's supposed to be a good time. And it's that it's always that balance in life of having fun but getting ready for your opponent. Because uh, you got to keep the main thing the main thing. But at the same time, you know, they're done with their classes. They've had a historic season. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited that Tim reached out to us and excited to go. We really, we really are. You guys have any other stuff like that lined up for the next few days or in Frisco? What's the kind of bowl week? Yeah, we do. Uh, we're. we're uh, had a booster help us and taking our kids to Andretti's. And uh, our, our boosters and our alums, there's nothing they won't do for these kids. And uh, we're really excited, uh, you know, to take those kids to Andretti's. And we got, you know, the bowl stuff for them when they get down there as well. So, you know, they didn't get to do anything last year, really. And uh, we're trying to make this a fun experience for, well, it's pretty much the same team for the last two seasons. And uh, we want them to have a good time. What did Coach Trailer learn about bowl week preparation, the bowl week in general, that he will instill this year 
Bob? You know, it's just so different because uh, last year, you remember, we had SMU, so we prepared for them for a few days, and then they couldn't play. Then we had to wait to see what bowl we were going to be in. Then I believe we got in uh, as first responders, and we found out who our opponent was. So then there was all that work we had done was gone. and So it was just such a different time. Uh, you know, I was also the head coach at SMU uh, during that bowl week, which is more of a normal time back then. Uh, but then I ended up not getting the job the last moment. So I was out of there, and Sonny ended up coming in coaching that bowl game. So I don't know that I really uh, officially learned uh, what a normal week is like as a head coach in a bowl. Uh, I've talked to a lot of coaches uh, that have had a lot of success in bowls, and people do it all different ways. You know, some guys look at it like fall camp, and they just in there banging the heck out of them and getting the young kids a lot of reps. Some guys look at it as it's just all fun and it's just going to be a good time. And I, I think I'm kind of like my personality. I'm, I'm kind of a little – I have, I have a gray personality. I'm not a very black and white person. And I'm probably one of those kind of guys that uh, – I try to use some common sense and, and make it be the best of both worlds and, and try to get my team ready to play, but at the same time understand their kids and they want to have a good time. I think we're getting ready to talk to Clarence Six here in a few minutes. How do you kind of sum up the season that he's put together and the impact he had on your defense? Yeah, you know, I would never complain uh, about those awards because uh, they're, they're just awards. But if, if he's – and nothing against the young man from Western Kentucky, but if Clarence Six isn't the most valuable player in our conference on defense – I mean, the plays that he made at such clutch times during the year and just his presence out there, uh, he is our third down package. I mean, you know, every time we get in third down, we have something for Clarence, some way to get him soloed. And uh, I, I'm so proud of him. I mean, his commitment to excellence and coming back. And uh, I, I, never, I never hear anything out of Clarence anymore. It's just a, a, a young man that's totally bought in. Where's that single digit with pride and uh, thrill for Clarence? And I'll be shocked if he doesn't find a way to make a, a team in the NFL. And how did he respond to not getting that honor and that opportunity? He's never said a word. It's never been mentioned. This is the first time I've even commented on it. We have not discussed it. I think he knows. I think our players know. And uh, I think everybody kind of knows. It was a pretty special season. We hadn't seen those sack numbers since Marcus was here. and. I mean, that's a pretty special company to be in for him, right? No doubt. And, uh, you know, those kind of things are always just, you know, you just wonder sometimes. But the other young man was a really good player and, and, and made some great plays too. You know, the play he made against Marshall, yeah. that, that game might have been over really. Marshall was really dominating that game. And, uh, for him to hurt their quarterback. Not that he hurt the quarterback on purpose, yeah. but he caused a turnover and injured him, which t from then on the game totally flipped. So I'm sure uh, the other young man deserves it as well. I'm speaking on behalf of Clarence Hicks as head coach. Do you have any idea what to expect tomorrow from signing day or any surprises or are there no surprises? Yeah, there are. There are and there's no doubt. No, we, you got to recruit it all the way to, the, the, to that thing comes across. Until we see the NLI of their name on it, you're never quite sure. We lost uh, one of the best players in our class last year on this night. And uh, he's doing really well at another school right now. It, it hurts me. Uh, he still texts me and tells me how much he loves me. I'm like, blah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys still fire up the fax machine or is that thing no, in, in the closet? It's somewhere? just old school, take a picture and yeah. send it. It's a lot easier than it used to be, no doubt. I can't Thanks, believe that I was going to ask about a fax